good afternoon everyone yeah thank you from the golang singapore to inviting me for speech for having me share about one topic quite interesting topic to you okay uh tonight i will share about optical character recognition implementations with golang so without further delay let's start let me introduce myself first uh, sorry okay my name is Ken Ruchwadi. You can call me Ken. And I'm currently working in Shopee Indonesia as senior software engineer. In Shopee Indonesia, we're working about uh, how applications and service to engage customers to use our product. Uh, previously, I'm working also in Tokopedia and OVO. Tokopedia is one also one of the largest e-commerce in Indonesia and also working with Golang at the time. And the second one is OVO. If you know Grab, Indonesia has also Grab in Indonesia. Grab. And the payment gateway that we use in Indonesian Grab is OVO. Okay. Uh, what's OCR? Why we, we should bring this topic tonight? Okay, OCR itself, it's an ability a system that can scan an image of text and identify them into text document. I mean, like uh, when the image and full of text, it will be scanned through and it will be converted into text document. So you can convert it into uh, editable text that can be processed into your systems or third party systems. And for the OCR itself, it has two sides. The first side is the training one. The training one, it captures various input from users because uh, as we know, every human, when we write an alphabet, it's not exactly the same. So that's why in OCR, we need various samples of one alphabet and the system itself it will capture it uh, captures and extract the plane uh, the data and identify whether they has uh, age or they has a uh, unique curves and they identify like oh uh, that character may be classified as a or b or number or special character and also in ocr it doesn't only uh, detect for the character. It also check about the grammar and the vocabulary. It to it is to increase the accuracy. And after training sections, and we establish some database about the grammar database and the character database. We have the recognition sites. In the recognition sites, user will input some inputs in the form of the image, full of text. And then in OCR system, it will process it based on the trained data, training data from the character model database and maybe from the grammar database and soon do recognition search. After the system is quite confident about the results, it will extract them in the word of sequence. As we can see here, it's the final results for that. Okay, we are already talking about what is OCR and how it works, but why we should know the OCR itself. Actually in OCR, it's already implemented in various uh, daily life use cases. First thing yeah, that I know is some of the FinTech applications let you to scan your debit or credit card number and then it will automatically input to your systems. Uh, user doesn't need to type it one by one. So system will let you input by it itself. And some in some country, there are some like uh, camera to detect the speeding. When car is getting speeding, uh, the camera also detect automatically the plate number of that vehicle. That's the OCR. And maybe in the airport, in the airport, when you scan your passport into some portal or some gates, it automatically extracts your name, your uh, passport number, and so on. 
Moving on. So uh, we're talking about the OCR, why we should study OCR, and then how we will implement it into our system. When we should start, what what the starts, what the system we should install. So the engine itself is called Tesla. Mm, maybe of you, some of you know Tesla like, oh, that's the stone that Loki holds in the Avengers Infinity Wars. But no, that's not the Tesseract I mean, but this is Tesseract. The Tesseract OCR, the open source engine for OCR. And because it's open source, so it's free. And it also licensed with Apache and backed by Google. Uh, as far as I know, uh, this engine is the most accurate open source OCR engine to date. And yeah, as I mentioned before, what is Tesla OCR? Tesla OCR itself is the open source C or C++ OCR applications. Yeah, after you download it and you install in your uh, computer, you can use it directly. And the most accurate open source OCR engine to date. And if you install it with some certain instructions like apt get installs or Mac ports or brew, you will get the latest stable version. It's it is the 411 versions, which is uh, re which was released on 26 December 2019, and also the version 5.0. It's on progress. So you, if you want to use the 5.0 versions, there is a, a installation guide, and you can apply it into your computer. But use it at your own risk because it's still the alpha testing phase. And as I, as I mentioned before, it's under license with Apache, Apache 2.0 and back with Google. How to install? You can directly install the Git uh, Tesseract with that link, github.com, Tesseract OCR, Tesseract Wiki. And as I mentioned before, if you want to install the latest stable one, you can go with apt get install if you use Ubuntu. Or if you use Mac, you can go with Mac ports or brew. It depends on your application. Okay, so let me uh, give you some demo related to the Tesla. Okay, wait. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, can you see my screen right now? We still see your slides, yeah. Oh, just see my slides, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, sorry. Uh, wait, I should give the demo first. New share. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my... Uh, outside of my slide, this one, okay? Okay, so let me show. Okay, now now I have. Wait, I delete this one first. Remove it. Delete. Move class. Okay. Okay, I have two image here. I want to extract them with OCR texture OCR engine. The first one is here. It this one. The advertisement one. That's uh, full of text. And the second one, it's mixed up with Japanese text and the English one. So let me try first. The first one is called OCR test JPG, the file name. So let me type it first. Uh, okay, clear. Uh, can you see my font? Uh, type in here. Yes. Oh, okay. So let me type it first. The Tesseract version to verify that it's already installed. Yes, it's already installed. And then Tesseract, the file name is OCR test, JPG. And we want to output it into certain files. So we have to put the name of the file output. This output number one, and we add options 
minus l to define its language because it's contain 100% of English. So I put ENG in here. I put ENG in here, enter, then it will be convert into new file. Output one text. Hello. I think we have internet problem. Yeah, I think so. Apologies. Let me try to clean that. Technical glitch, hold your horses. <laughs> this is where a video meetup, online meetup for a shot. Can I be back in a few minutes? Okay, sorry, uh, my internet is down, so I'm using my backup. So, for uh, my apologies. Uh, so, what is my last presentation? You were on the terminal? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let me continue from my terminal. Mm, my terminal, purview, no, no, not this one. Just click, stop. Uh, sorry, let me share, new share here. Share. Okay, let me continue. Sorry, my apologies for the technical issues. <laughs> okay, so as we can see, uh, the output itself, it's 90% similar with the input. And we can see here, the publications of the work of John Knox, it is supposed will extend to five volumes. It's clearly the same. But there's some errors happen like uh, this, this one, this, it's convert as does. And John Knox, it's convert to John Knox. Yeah, because uh, the character itself, it's not a small character. Yeah, it's, it's like not successfully, not, not successfully, more like uh, just some errors. And we should tweak it at the later when we want to implement this OCR. And also, when we want to convert this one more, sorry, Japanese text PNG 10, we want to extract them. Let me clear it first. Oh, no, let me minimize it. Let me clear it first. And then we do the same thing, like the same thing. The select Japanese text output number two and the language because the language is mixed there are two languages this is the japanese and the english one so we use english plus japanese there you go we have output two text we just get it and there you go the output it's quite similar with the input Okay, moving on with the presentations. Okay, for the presentations. Okay, so we already know that the OCR is works by command line and we just give the inputs and we can put an output into text files. And the next question is, 
because our topic is about implementation in the Golang, how we integrate it in the Golang? First thing first, we already uh, have one library that integrate with the Tesseract OCR. It's called Goserac. Yeah, thanks to this developer, the developer photos, uh, he made this library, and this library is also list in awesome slash awesome minus go.com. So it is quite dependable library because it's already list in awesome go. And this library it's also act as the bridge of the official C library of Tesseract and Golang. So this this library purpose it's to bridging the C, C and C++ library into Golang. As you know that Golang itself can compile uh, C library. And now the question is how we will use this library. Let me give the sample code first. Okay. Um, can you see my uh, Visual Studio code? Can. Yes. Oh, okay. So let's start. As usual, we use package main at start, and we use function main at the first time. Okay, so we want to implement Goserac in this code. How we will do that? We should import first. We make the client library first, client equals to goserac library, goserac dot new client. Yeah, it automatically import github.com otiat 10 goserac. We already made the client. The first step we should do is define the image input first. So we type image input, sorry, image input client dot set image and my left hand side there is OCR test dot gpj we use this one OCR test dot test dot gpg and not only that as we do this in command line we also define which language we want to use so define the language client dot set language we should use same as the command line so because the input itself is mostly using english we put in eng in here okay we already config the parameter and how we will export the result we put it like here output output comma error equals to client dot text Yes, that's it. Output. And as usual, we use error not equal to no. Uh, let's assume we panic it if there's error happens. Panic uh, fail to extract text. And of course, after successful, we should print out the output. Let me FMT print learn output here you go save it okay let's try it go run main.go okay we already get the export yeah this is the result it's similar with when we did it into with the command line, same. So how how we integrate with that library, this library, and also we should install the Goserac, the Tesseract OCR, and then we successfully implement it into Golang. Okay, back to the slide. Actually, uh, what I show you, it's the knife approach. You just completely use that image directly and extract the text. But 
but the current issue is but the current issue is uh, there is some technical limitations happen when we just use this snap knife approach the first one is about the manual image pre-processing as we can see this image this is the full color image and the color itself it's not quite distinctive enough with other parts so in order to make it more distinctive and more easier to system read it we should convert this image into like this black and white and looks like yeah the, that part it's quite distinctive enough and next it's about the image sections divisions as you can see in here the rectangle the rectangle each of the rectangle it's have to be treated separately i mean like when we see that there's some rectangle has text and the background it's the color is bland bland enough and we almost we cannot see the text yeah. itself and some of them is quite distinctive enough mm -hmm. so you can use that area and extract them directly and OCR will directly give the output as you expect but some of them is if that rectangle is not quite distinctive like the most left bottom left sorry, sorry bottom right it will not uh, extract as we expect maybe there's no output from that part and the last one is about the blacklisting and the whitelisting the character yeah one things the one case that uh, when we want to extract the O, the O characters, the zero and the O character maybe almost cannot be different. So when we want to extract the number, the number from the input that we expect all of the input, uh, all of the character it's in number, we have to do whitelisting. We only include numbers in that part so when we want to scan that card number it will guarantee it extract only numbers because we only whitelist zero to nine and it also goes when you want we have uh, input that only consists hexadecimal number hexadecimal number only consists zero to nine a to f so we have to whitelist zero to nine a to f or maybe we want to avoid a uh, special character we can use blacklist like we want to avoid uh, ampersands or want to avoid question mark that usually happens in that input we blacklist that kind of character when we want to extract them to OCR okay right actually I want to tell you some story that before I implement the OCR one year ago, there is one uh, game that I quite love, and I want to implement the OCR because uh, I want to do some streamlined process when we want to extract the numbers and we want to extract the data from the pictures. Yeah, maybe some of you know the game called Gitadora. Gitadora, it's a game that made by Konami, and it's also appeared in the arcade. And one year ago, I have a task to extract the data from the image itself because uh, there is uh, in this game, there's one application that can extract players uh, score and players achievement into the image template. So I take that initiative and made a program to extract the some important data like this one i give a red rectangle in this slide and i took the timestamp uh, song titles scores and achievement rate uh, i made these systems uh, because uh, at that time there is some initiative from the community to make uh, competitions about this game and we want to make it easier to all the submissions so we create these systems 
and we hope that we can reduce the manual interventions from users. So if you want to take a look for the repository, there is httpsgithub.com with jody1 slash kitadora score parser if you want to check it out. Okay, that's it. Okay, any questions so far? Thank you, Kenneth. <clears throat> any questions from the floor? Okay. Seems like no. Okay. So yeah, let me close then. So if you have uh, more questions or maybe you want to spare some questions in the future, you can uh, send me email by kenartwichardi at shopee.com or maybe kenartwichardi at gmail.com, whatever you suit. And you can also directly PM me by Facebook and Instagram. So thank you very much, Paul, and see you next time. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you. Thanks for presenting. Okay. All right. I think that's all we have for this round. Thank you for staying throughout. We have uh, about 70, 60 people left. Thanks uh, for those who stay behind. Um, thank you to the two speakers. Hope to have you back again. Okay. That's all, guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, see you guys again very soon.